Good afternoon. Uh, my name is James Young, the Nationals Foreign Editor, and this afternoon I'm joined by Mina Alarebi, Nationals Editor-in-Chief, to discuss the major announcement made just a few minutes ago that the UAE will establish uh, diplomatic relations with Israel in exchange for the halt of annexation of Palestinian land. So, Mina, tell me about what's just happened. So, in a call that was attended by U.S. President Donald Trump, you had uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, and Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, getting together on a call and agreeing on a number of things, but the two headlines from it, so to speak, is Israel agreeing to halt its plans to annex Palestinian lands, and the UAE and Israel agreeing that they will establish bilateral ties. Now, when we think back a few weeks ago, everything we were talking about and thinking about was the Israelis had announced they would annex Palestinian lands. There was huge concern about the Jordan Valley, the impact this would have for Palestine, Jordan, the wider region. Um, a lot has happened in the meantime, and we've had this announcement of this trilateral call and, of course, this historic agreement between the UAE and Israel. Um, they've issued a joint statement, and in the joint statement, um, they say delegations from the UAE and Israel will meet in the coming weeks to sign bilateral agreements regarding investment, tourism, direct flights, security, telecommunications, technology, energy, healthcare, culture, environment, um, and other areas of mutual benefit. Now, that's a lot. And so what we are hearing is that, of course, they will have committees coming together and looking at how they will work on these many, many issues. But most importantly is the UAE is very clear that it continues to believe in this two-state solution. It's part of you know, the belief in the Arab peace plan, but at the same time, things were really not moving. On the contrary, a few weeks ago, we saw how disastrous it could have all gone if the Israelis had gone ahead with the annexation plans, which they almost had a green light from the Americans about. And of course, you remember uh, Ambassador Yusuf al the UAE ambassador to Washington, wrote uh, his uh, op-ed in Hebrew. He reached out to Israel directly and said, look, we're working towards certain things. All of that will disappear if you go ahead with these annexation plans. And they halted. We don't know how much, of course, in their considerations that op-ed went into uh, play, but the UAE was working very, very diligently uh, along with the Jordanians and with others um, to try to stop that. So we see that. It's quite interesting. The statement says Israel and the United Arab Emirates will join with the United States to launch a strategic agenda for the Middle East um, to expand diplomatic trade security cooperation. So that's something that we'll wait and see what, what will come of it. And you just touched on it a bit there, but, but the significance of, of this halt in annexation, I mean, that, that is a big deal. We had European ambassadors, we had UN officials warning that, that such a move would effectively end any chance of a two-state solution. Yeah, and I mean, frankly, it is one of the depressing signs of the occupation that actually halting annexation is such a big deal. But that's the reality on the ground. You know, I think for many people, they'll say, well, hold on, the occupation continues. There are still issues. I think it would be illogical and wrong to say, yes, all that's gone away. But it hasn't. But halting annexation was so important because of the ramifications for Palestinians, for the region, for the Jordanians. I mean, one of the other things that this, um, this statement importantly says that Muslims can visit and pray Al-Aqsa Mosque. Again, it's something that is a right, but it's not necessarily something that they enjoy at the moment. So it's something that also is important now that you have the Americans and the Israelis guaranteeing this. Yeah. So, so this is a step maybe towards restarting some sort of peace process, restarting those talks, restarting some sort of dialogue. That, yeah, I mean, that would be the hope. It, yeah. It's really difficult with these things, I think, especially um, at a time that we see, you know, the region is going through so much, but also the world is going so much with um, COVID-19. It's quite interesting. Even, even this statement and this um, agreement was touched by this pandemic that we're all living, and there's talk of um, the UAE and Israel working together on fighting COVID-19 together. Um, and this is, again, you know, it's, it's a very changed world today than, you know, the previous decades and uh, what, what the region has gone through. And of course, this is the first time we're talking about bilateral relations, about direct government ties, but this isn't the first thing that's happened. We've seen, you know, movement in this direction uh, up until this point, right? Yeah, you know, it's been interesting, of course, in the UAE, you know, the UAE wants to play a global role. So you can toast something like Expo, for example, and say we're going to eliminate certain countries and they can't come. So Expo, which was supposed to happen in October, was going to have an Israeli presence and hopefully it will happen next year and will have an Israeli presence. The UAE also hosts the International Energy 
the, the International Agency for Renewable Energy, IRENA. And IRENA is an international body. It belongs to the UN. You can't exclude. So, of course, the Israelis had um, a presence that way. I mean, the interesting thing about this is you see other countries in the region have certain ties with Israel. Um, you know, we were all surprised when we saw the photos of um, the Israeli Prime Minister in Oman, Sultan Qaboos, and he was received. Um, in Qatar, there is a trade office by the Israelis and other sorts of ties that are happening behind closed doors or at least sometimes surprisingly public. And what's happened now with the UAE is at least there's, there's some sort of clarity of what their intentions are and what their priorities are. And what do we know at this point of who's involved in this and what this involves coming forward? Um, good question. I mean, we, this, this news is just a, a, an hour or two old, not even. Um, I mean, of course, the Americans have had a very important um, role uh, to play. Um, and I believe it's, it's really, it really is the U.S., the U.A.E., and Israel. But those details will definitely emerge in how this came about. But we, what's certain is that the U.A.E.'s role in the last few months, and especially the push against annexation, they've been coordinating with other Arab countries on that particular issue. Um, and so, so that would have played a part in, in their thinking as they came um, to this agreement. And what happens now? Well, we've just had President Trump speaking, and he was saying that there will actually be a signing um, ceremony. We haven't seen anything like that. So um, in, in the last uh, few years for an actual deal to come to fruition. Um, so there is the po that possibility. I and mean, we'll have to see reactions, reactions from the region, reactions internationally. Um, again, you know, the Europeans have been pushing to try to move the stalemate that was happening on the ground. And this definitely does. This puts a new impetus. You know, there was hope for um, the Trump people deal. Well, there wasn't hope. There was some sort of expectations for the Trump peace deal, but not too much came out from that. But suddenly you have this, which is much more tangible of what can actually happen on the ground. And of course, importantly, we'll have to see what the, what the Palestinians have to say. And I want to come back just quickly to some of the things that it's actually specifically laid out. We're talking about agriculture, climate change, uh, technology transfer, coronavirus mm. vaccines. Um, you know, what kind of role can the UAE play in the region in these things? And, and what will be relationship with Israel going forward mean for that? Well, the UAE already plays a huge role. I mean, again, you look at how dynamic the economy of the UAE is, despite, again, the world is going through um, a recession, but the UAE economy is quite dynamic, and they're always looking for what's next big, big thing, what's the big technology transfer that they can have. Um, and again, Israel has a lot of that dynamism that's happening in the region, and usually there isn't any direct collaboration. It's usually going through the US or other channels. Um, so we might see some of that come about. Um, but what is interesting, of course, is that the UAE, as I said, is, is a global country. It's a global hub. And this is something that opens up another, another door. Um, but again, I think it's really, really important to keep in mind and to read what's actually in the text. And what the UAE is saying is that we're very committed to a, a peace deal, an eventual peace deal that comes about, and that you know, the Palestinians are a people with a just cause and a rights that should be respected. Um, so if you're just joining us, this is the news, obviously, that the UAE and Israel will form bilateral relations uh, in exchange for the halting of annexation of Palestinian land. This has come in a joint statement with the United States uh, just over an hour ago, I think now. Um, we've had some reaction from Donald Trump. We're waiting for more reactions from other uh, regional and local leaders um, to that. Donald Trump obviously hails this as a historic move um, going forwards.